Is collagen powder safe for hormone health? And is it really worth buying and using every day in terms of effectiveness and safety? Hi, and welcome to the Wild Wisdom Show. I'm Dr. Patricia Mills, holistic medical doctor, transforming your health with natural root cause solutions. And today we're going to be looking into collagen powder. Does it really work? Effects on skin, joint, and hormone health explained. This is a very popular supplement these days, and we're going to go deep into it because the question is, does it really work? Now, collagen is derived from animal sources only, and it's usually from connective tissues, either from pigs or beef or fish, serine collagen. And there's different ways to extract the collagen out of the tissues. And usually they use heating processes, and the first product one gets is a gelatin-like compound. And if they take that gelatin and further break it down, otherwise hydrolyze it, which is called hydrolyzed collagen, then you get the basic building blocks of collagen, including what are called peptides, which are small little pieces of protein. And they're different from bigger complex proteins in that there's just a couple of amino acids are more linked together. And amino acids are the basic building blocks of protein. And so collagen is a kind of a protein, but it's got a very unique profile and it's found in large amounts in the skin, typically type one and type three collagen or type two collagen, which is found in joints. And it's very large amounts, actually. When you look at it, it's about 75% of the dry weight of your skin. So a huge percentage of the skin. And it forms like a latticework structure that holds in moisture. And that's what keeps the skin, you know, plump and wrinkle free and firm. As we age, the skin naturally loses collagen, and that's what contributes to some of the wrinkling and aging of skin with time. Same thing in the joints. And so the question is, if we supplement with collagen powder, and there are different kinds of powder, will we get improvements in our skin health and in our joint health? And will there be a negative impact on hormones, no impact or a positive impact? And that's what we're going to dive into today. The research shows that when it comes to skin, taking about 1.65 to 5 grams of collagen powder a day for a minimum of 6 to at least 16 weeks may improve skin elasticity and reduce wrinkles. Now, having said the may part, the research shows that it pretty consistently does. And most of the effects are seen after about 9 90 days of supplementation consistently. And if you were do, to do, if you were to do that and there were to be benefits seen, and then you stop the supplementation, those benefits would persist for about four weeks. Now, the results are really pronounced in people who are older, for example, women over the age of 35, simply because there's more wrinkles present, and so there would be more improvement to be seen. And when you add vitamin C to the collagen, and vitamin C is very important for collagen and skin synthesis and health as well, you get better results. Taking anywhere between like two to five grams a day for at least 90 days would be the time that you could do to see if there's any beneficial effects for your skin. And there aren't really many studies that look at collagen very long term, like taking it every day for your whole life. But we're going to talk about whether or not there's any potential side effects that you could experience at this dose or even higher doses. Now, when it comes to joint health, the cool thing is that doses of two to 10 grams a day have been shown over time to improve joint pain and mobility. So whether or not you have osteoarthritis causing pain, it seems to imp improve the mobility and function. And if you do have the pain, it improves the pain. Now, the thing is that you would be having to use a specific type of collagen and that would be what's called hydrolyzed collagen. So when you look at gelatin versus collagen versus hydrolyzed collagen, the one that's best absorbed is the hydrolyzed collagen. And that's because it's smaller in size and it slips better through the gut lining into the body to be used. And if it is collagen powder that is being used that's not hydrolyzed, when it comes to the joint, it seems like type two collagen for the joints is what's better, whereas for the skin, hydrolyzed collagen is best, and particularly type 1 and type 3 collagen. And again, for the joints, up to 10 grams a day for a minimum of six months. While the skin you see improvement in 90 days, 
in the joints, it has to be for at least six months to see that significant improvement. So this is not something that will immediately make your pain or stiffness or decreased function as a result of joint issues go away right away. Consistency and persistency is what's needed in order to get results. Now, when I was going through the research, what was a surprise is that collagen may even lower the bad kind of cholesterol. I don't like to call cholesterol bad because we do need cholesterol to make hormones and to do things like build a healthy brain. But the kind of cholesterol we want to keep towards the lower end of the scale, which is called LDL cholesterol, seems to improve favorably to collagen as does blood pressure. Now, they're not exactly sure why this is. It could be due to a lower, an inflammation lowering effect because collagen seems to reduce inflammation through pathways that we're not quite sure of. Also, the lining of blood, blood vessels is made out of collagen. So it may be that if we can provide some better building blocks or stimulation of creation of collagen through the supplementation, we get better blood vessel health with better blood pressure. But regardless, that seems to be a result as well. The research shows that collagen could help us prevent losing muscle as a result of aging, and that's called sarcopenia in medical terms. It's age-related muscle loss. And it looks like taking collagen can help prevent or at least, you know, soften that muscle loss. Other strategies are always important. Holistic is always the name of the game. So, of course, strength training adequately is an important part of that, making sure you're eating an anti-inflammatory diet because inflammation is one of the causes of this age-related muscle loss. But adding something like collagen, not as a standalone, but as an additional supplementary strategy, which is what supplements always are, could be helpful. Same thing for rheumatoid arthritis. There seems to be some prom promising results in this condition for dental health. So the gum health and the tooth health and more. So research is constantly coming out on collagen. Remains to see what could not be helped by taking collagen these days. So the question is that how does collagen work in the body? So it seems to be a double effect. Effect number one is it provides the raw materials, which are building blocks for collagen. And the different kinds of collagen, type one, two, and three, have very specific building blocks for their creation. And so that's why something like collagen powder may be more effective than, let's say, a general protein powder for specifically addressing these collagenous tissues in the body. And what's really exciting is that when you do the hydrolyzed collagen and you have those very, very small little chains of amino acids, which are called peptides, they also act as sign signaling molecules, kind of like hormones in the body. And they float around and they attach to the cells and they attach to what are called receptors on the cells. And whenever a receptor is attached to and activated, that stimulates activity inside of the cell. And what it seems to do when it's a collagen peptide is it stimulates the production of collagen within those tissues. That is a very interesting finding. And actually, one really cool thing is that it can be especially helpful to take as a result of this stimulus function before workouts. If you take, according to research, 15 to 30 grams of hydrolyzed collagen before strength training exercise, this can boost collagen production. And that seems to be more through that stimulating effect of the receptors on the cells. For women, this can be especially helpful during our high estrogen phase of the menstrual cycle, which is just after our menstruation in the follicular phase up to ovulation, because we tend to have lower collagen production during this phase. Now, whenever I look at a supplement and particularly things that are refined, I want to know what are the effects, if any, on our hormones? Because for example, I'm not a big fan of protein powder because I've discovered that it's a big stimulator of the insulin hormone, unlike regular protein sources from eating, let's say, fish or meat or eggs or plant-based protein. Those do stimulate some insulin production, but not very much. But if you have protein powder, it causes an insulin spike. It's called insulinogenic. And while in the short term, this may make your blood glucose appear to be better, which is one of the reasons why some people are taking protein powder, my concern is over the long term, repetitive insulin spikes are connected to insulin resistance, which cause diabetes, Alzheimer's, polycystic ovarian syndrome, inflammation in the body, and more. So when I looked at collagen powder, I wanted to see if there was any research 
that shows that co taking collagen powder itself would cause an insulin spike. And the good news is that it doesn't it cause an insulin spike. It has no effect on estrogen, testosterone, or progesterone production. In this case, it's good. We don't really want to see those. And also it may actually improve insulin resistance. And again, we're not really sure why or how it does it, but the good news is that there seems to be a beneficial effect on our hormone receptors rather than a negative effect. So I'm always happy to see that when I look at anything that's very ultra processed, because I want to make sure I'm not unknowingly causing hormonal imbalance or inflammation to occur, which over the long term may be especially harmful. So as a result, let's look at what the recommendations are to optimize your response to collagen supplementation. So number one, choose hydrolyzed collagen and make sure it's a super clean formula. It should just have collagen in it. No flavor enhancers, nothing like that. It's unnecessary. Collagen actually doesn't taste bad at all. It's kind of like a little gelatin substance. Once you mix it in with cold water, you can add that cold water with the collagen to your teas or to your coffees, or you can have it on its own very palatable, very tolerable. Look for type one and three if you're looking primarily for skin health, for joint health, type two, or just a good quality hydrolyzed collagen. If you want to maximize the results, pair it with vitamin C for improved enhancement of synthesis or creation of collagen. And if you're exercising, you can time it to take it before exercise so that you get that signaling for collagen formation. So summary, collagen can be a very powerful ally. It's backed by science. It's safe for your hormones and it's full of potential. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel at dr.patriciamills on YouTube. That's the best way to support this show. If you enjoyed this, save it for future reference and share. Sharing is caring and you never know when someone might benefit from this wild wisdom. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, evening or night, depending on when you catch this and I'll see you next time. Bye now.